Hey everybody, it's Cameron Tim and I'm going to show you how to use Madsen X4 and Alpha Channels and Resolve and stuff. Oh hey, I got some feedback on the video. Camera Tim's awesome. No. Honestly, Tim, this is a fantastic video. No. Your comedy and humor is on point. No. I would also maybe kind of con work out maybe some. Don't say it. I'm going to say. Don't say it. Better lighting. <sighs> Come on. You know what to do. You know what to do, buddy. Come on. I know, Sam. I know. Fine. Time to clean up this monstrosity. That works. You happy? I stream on Twitch. Sometimes I'll stream something, sometimes I'll stream something else, and I stream editing. So you can ask me questions related to cameras, editing, lighting, and Adobe Recovery Rehab. I had to rig this lighting setup before I got some panels because Sam told me to. You can follow me on the Insta for when I actually get out of this house and start shooting stuff. Look at that. All the more reason to press the buttons. Now this is something we all love. Alpha get- whoops. Alpha channels. There are a lot of videos out there on how to render out alpha channels from Resolve, but a lot of them talk about rendering in DNxHR and then bringing it back into Resolve, but not really for using it elsewhere. I'm going to show you how to render out an alpha channel in Resolve and be able to bring it into OBS, whether you're trying to create mats, an overlay, or you just like being vulnerable. I mean transparent. So let's say you have a fusion composition where you've done an animation or an overlay and then you're ready to render it out. When you head over to the deliver page, these are the settings that you're going to want to do. You'll need to set it to individual clips, select QuickTime format, the codec in GoPro Cineform, type RGB 16 bit, and then check the export alpha box. If you're on a Mac, just use ProRes 4444. <laughs> There's four of them. Use that codec. The key thing with individual clips is you need to make sure that if you're rendering multiple layers in your edit page, make sure you highlight them all and make them a compound clip. This kind of works like nesting in Premiere or pre-composing in After Effects. This can also sometimes fix if it only renders a part of the Fusion clip. You gotta compound the fuse! When it comes to pre-multiplied versus straight, most of the time you'll want pre-multiplied as it's a little less processor heavy, but if you need your transparent colors to be unmatted, straight is what you'll need. Now what does this mean? So when placed on a black background, you're not going to notice the difference between the two. A pre-multiplied alpha channel will almost always be matted or combined with a black background. So when you look at it in a preview window like so, it'll look as you would expect. So if you have some soft edges or some colors that have transparency in your clip, then it's possible a pre-multiplied render will give you some sort of weird color fringing or halos that you weren't expecting. So in this case, you would want to go with a straight alpha channel. Now let's say you have a black and white matte animation or transition that you want to apply to your clip. There are a couple ways you can set this up so that it'll be easy to replace later, but a simple way to do it is to place your matte over top of your clip, highlight them both, right click and create new fusion clip. And when you open the fusion page, you're going to want to delete this merge node and then you're going to want to click on matte control. Then with your matte clip, right click and drag over top of the matte control and then select solid matte. Now in the inspector window with matte control selected, set combine to clear. And then under solid matte, set channel to luminance. And then check post multiply image at the bottom. These settings will make the black cut out the image and white keep it in. If you want these reversed so black keeps it in, white cuts it out, just select invert under solid matte. And then also, anything in between black and white will act as transparency. Now if you have a stationary matte that you want to animate, just select your matte, and go to the transform node, and then you can Adjust your timeline bar here to set where you want these keyframes to be. So let's say we want this to scale and move at the same time. So let's move the timeline bar to the end here. Bring this over to the left and then scale it up. And let's bring it over here a little bit more. Let's just bring it off screen. So then we have the mat animating like so. Why you would want to animate it to do it like this, I have no idea. There's also the spline editor tool to adjust your keyframes in case you wanted to ease them. 
So you can highlight your keyframes and press F to flatten it. And you can press T and that'll bring up your E's in and out amount. If you want me to go more in depth on some of these fusion tools, just let me know in the comments. Every day I'm rendering. If you're wanting to use this file as an overlay in OBS, stream elements, or something semantically similar, then you'll want to compress it to WebM. WebM has a very similar compression size and quality as H.264, but it also supports alpha channels. And it's open source. Screw you licensing! If you have Adobe Media Encoder, you can use the WebM plugin for Premiere. You can use aconvert.com and just upload your file to convert it, although it has a 200 megabyte limit. Or you can download FFmpeg if you want to have a local application and don't have access to Adobe. Links to all of these things will be in the description, by the way. FFmpeg is a command line converter, which may be intimidating at first, but I'll show you step by step how to convert your files to WebM. So first you're just going to want to go to ffmpeg.org, click on the download page, and select the platform that you're using. If you're using Linux, you don't need to watch the rest of this video. So when you select your platform, go to the, the build section, and you can download the build from there. If you want to full on install FFmpeg into your system the right way, I'll put a link in the video description on how to do that. But if you want a quick and easy way on how to do this, when you open up these folders, go to the bin, and then you'll see FFmpeg right here. You're going to want to copy it to a folder that you can easily navigate to. And when you do that and you want to convert your video, make sure you put your video in the same folder that FFmpeg is in. Then open your command prompt. You're going to type in CD space and then click and drag the destination and press enter. Now the command prompts directory is in the folder where FFmpeg is at. Now for a basic command to convert to WebM, what you're going to want to do is type in FFmpeg. This initializes the application and then you're going to put dash I and this means you're selecting an input. Then you're going to put the title of the video including the extension and if it doesn't show the extension, just either hover over it or look at the file type and you'll see that it's MOV. So I'm going to type in intro.mov and then I want it to be a WebM. So I'm just going to type the output name and put intro.webm and I'm going to press enter. And if your file already has an alpha channel, it'll automatically detect that and put the alpha channel in with it. And the output name can be whatever you want it to be. Just make sure you put .webm at the end. Once it's done, we can throw our new WebM file into OBS to test it. And voila! I am definitely not an FFmpeg expert, although I'm trying to learn it so that I can be more efficient with it, but it's a really powerful tool that allows you to do pretty much any type of conversion you can think of. There are custom scripts that can be made for it so that you can just click it and it'll do what you want it to do without having to enter all the information again. And you can set up a batch process in a script so that you can do as many clips as you want at one time. I really hope this video was helpful. If you have any suggestions on what other types of videos you want me to do, leave a love note in the comments. This is Camera Tim, signing out. Guess it has to be my outro now.